Hello, in this video, I'll be talking about all linked glycosylation. So what does glycosylation mean? Glycosylation is simply attachment of a sugar residue to something. And this something is a protein. So just like depicted here, the box is stacked with the address tag. And that would be easier for the delivery machinery to deliver it to its proper location. Now, this tag could be different as well. So if we signify all in glycosylation as this green tag, as you can see, the location is different and the constituent that the tag is made up of is also different. So these are differences between A-linked and O-linked glycosylation. So let's look at O-linked glycosylation to appreciate this process and then we talk about its biological relevance and its function. So O-linked glycosylation also takes place in the Golgi apparatus. Now, unlike in-link glycosylation, O-link glycosylation takes place in serine or threonine residues of amino acid. And if you remember, in-link glycosylation takes part on asparagine residue. So it, it's attached on asparagine, not serine or threonine. Now, there could be multiple different structures of these O-link glycosylation tag. And this tag varies uh, from different protein to protein, but there are some Classical structures, which are known as core 1, core 2, or something very complicated like polyenacetyl lactosamine. So basically, it contains of N acetyl galactosamine, N acetyl glucosamine, and sometimes galactose, sometimes fucose, or the sugars could be different. Now, let's talk about what are the common sugar residues in present in these O-link glycosylation tags. Most common of them is N-link glucosamine, N-acetyl glucosamine, galactose, fucose, salic acid, and many more. So these sugars that we talked about can be further sulfated or acetylated in several residues and further modified, and each has a fun functional significance to that. Now, for example, the process of these uh, O-link glycosylation is catalyzed by N-acetyl glucosamine transferase, which transfers the N-acetyl glucosamine group there. And on once it is transferred, the further sugar residues can be attached by several other glycosyl transferase enzymes. Now, this is pretty important. For example, if we talk about complement system, which is a defense response against the bacteria, so the mannose binding lectin determines the O-link glycosylation on the bacterial membrane. And that is how the, the bacteria could be recognized by the immune system and can be neutralized. So the lectin pipe pathway solely depends upon ma mannose binding lectin and O-link glycosylation interaction. So it is super important in terms of immunology. Now, let's talk about very common thing. For example, the red blood cell has A antigen or B antigen on top of its surface. But do you know that H antigen, which is the base of it, can be either uh, be modified into different residues and based on that, it could be A antigen or it could be B antigen. Now, not only that, uh, the blood cells, especially the WBCs, which need to go out in terms of any kind of uh, when the body is challenged with kind of uh, attack, then it need to roll slowly. And in order to roll slowly, it need to interact with the endothelial cells, the blood vessel cells. And the way it does is uh, by P-selectin and integrin interaction. And if you know that P-selectin is heavily glycosylated, actually this heavily glycosylation helps the neutrophil to slow down and squeeze itself out from the blood vessel to reach the tissue space where the attack has take place. Now, if you talk about mucins, which are present in your gut or present in your nasal epithelia, all these mucin, we can find all in glycosylated proteins. And that is super important in terms of uh, combating with bacteria or protecting your nasal epithelia or intestinal epithelia. So we can see that old in glycosylation is important for so many biological processes. Now, not only that, one of the important structure in terms of tissue is the extracellular matrix. And several extracellular matrix components such as fibrinogen, fibronectin, collagen, etc. are heavily glycosylated. And that in 
kind of uh, determines how much rigid the extracellular matrix would be and that could be very relevant in terms of the biological property of the extracellular matrix so all in glycosylation is super important so let's just take a look what we learned so far so enlin glycosylation happens in a, a sort of kind of a sequential manner so you have a core structure onto that it's getting extended and you get capping now here in case of olein glycosylation the core structure is fairly simple on top of that several glycosyl transferase enzyme transfer specific re residues and you could have a wide variety of variations in case of olein glycosylation so olein glycosylation variety is way more than the enlin glycosylation variety and each of these different kind of modifications can lead to different biological functions so i hope you enjoyed this introductory video on these uh, olein glycosylation so if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you